welcome back to Her Sport Ireland's only platform dedicated to covering women in sport. Whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook or Twitter, you're very welcome and be sure to check out the rest of our content. So today we are joined by Aoife Cook. Aoife is a marathon runner competing in this year's Olympics. So Aoife, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you very much. Good, glad to hear it. So um, the big race, how are you feeling ahead of Tokyo in a few weeks' time? Are you looking forward to getting out there? I am. I am looking forward to it now. So uh, I've come over here. I'm in Utah at the moment doing um, some altitude training and training in the warmer weather. So I'll be here up until I go over to Japan the end of July. So um, a lot of uh, organizing being done now at the moment, but uh, it's all really exciting. Yeah, definitely. So um, you're training in Utah. What does that kind of involved? Is it a long day with, um, with training and getting used to the weather? Um, I usually get up early, so I, I've done my first run this morning at seven. Um, and then I just kind of uh kind of rest for, for a few hours. I'm still doing a bit of work online here while I'm over here as well. Um, and then I'll usually do a second run in the in the afternoon. So it's kind of two two runs a day um with a, a long run at the weekend. So it's uh, it's fairly busy. Fairly busy, yeah, but you're all able for it, I'm sure. So um, to bring things back to the start then, kind of how did you first um, get into running? What kind of started your interest? Um, so I, well, I started when I was 11. So um, I, was, I was quite young. Um, I suppose like the first, um, you know, what kind of got me interested in the first place was my aunt. Um, her name is Mary Sweeney. She was, a, she was a great runner back in her day as well. So she lived kind of close to where I lived and I used to watch her going out running, you know, training every morning and I just, you know, kind of inspired me. Um, and then uh, the local club started where I lived in Ballincolly when I was 11 then and she started coaching at that club. So um, I decided to join. Um, so then she was coaching me and um, and that's kind of where it all started, really. Cool. So um, so what happened then, like coaching and training, um, I know from like research and stuff that you've won like several junior titles um so how did you like progress I guess is the next question yeah so like at the beginning when I first started I you know I wouldn't have been um any uh, amazingly talented or anything like that I was kind of middle of the road I, I would have kind of scored maybe third on my team um and things like that in cross country cross country was kind of my favorite event growing up it was just a lot of fun um just uh, an excuse to, to play in the mud <laughs> when you were younger um but uh when I kind of got to about 15 16 then I I kind of noticed I think when the distance started getting longer with the yeah. races I, I started to improve and and, and that's when I kind of started winning medals um, in the cross country. And then when I got to 17, I got offered a scholarship to go over to um, America, to Arkansas Tech. So the coach over there uh, was Irish. So he was kind of keeping tabs on, on all the Irish results back home. And my name had popped up. So he got in touch with me and offered me that scholarship. So I, um, you know, I, I decided that it was a good plan. And I, I went over there to, to train then when I was 17. Definitely. Yeah, that's a massive um, opportunity. I'm sure any athlete will be jumping at the choice. So uh, what was that like when you went to America? And um, what was that experience like? Was it different from competing here, would you say? Uh, it was great. I mean, I suppose when I first got over there, there was just that kind of little bit of a culture shock and I was a bit homesick and, and stuff at the start. But um, after a few months there, I, I kind of, you know, settled in and um, it was great. Like the, the training was a lot more, I suppose, structured. Um, it was my first experience of kind of running twice a day and um, and things like that. So it was fairly, fairly full on. Um, the did take a bit of getting used to and then and then going to college and stuff um on top of that as well so it was busy but um I really enjoyed it I loved the structure of it and um I could see you know that that the running was improving and everything so um I definitely thought it was worth being over there yeah definitely so um unfortunately all that came to an end um due to injuries and a lot of other circumstances so um kind of what happened and like how how did you feel throughout that like I'm sure it was tough yeah so like when uh, it was my second like after my second year over in Arkansas my second year probably was my best um kind of running wise I 
um, I kind of won my conference championship and my regional championship um, in the cross country. And I finished ninth at the national championships in that year. And I, I flew home actually to run in the Irish national championships as well, where I was third, which qualified me to run in the Euro cross country. So, you know, things were going really, really well with the running. Um, felt like I was really improving and, you know, going the right direction. And then um, a couple of months after, after that, um, these injuries started to happen. So I got a fracture in my pelvis, um, which was really, really painful. And obviously that uh, requires a, a lot of time out in order for it to heal. So I think the, the time frame given was about 12 weeks um, of no running, you know, Um so I did that and um, kind of started getting back running a little bit again after that. And then I, I got a fracture in my foot. So, you know, I knew there was something up and I just had to get it checked out. And it turned out I had low bone density. So um, I had to stop, you know, the, the, the fractures would have just kept happening if I kept running. So I yeah. had to stop and, and get that sorted out then. Yeah. Um, so was it was it tough to deal with that or was it just like, okay, this happened, um, I'm going to fix it and see what happens or was it like, oh no, I, yeah. just, I can't run? It was devastating at the time. Um, you know, I, I thought, you know, the 12 weeks out because of the, the hip fracture was, you know, devastating enough. And then to be told this, that, and, and there was no kind of time frame given on on this, you know, the, the low bone density, you know, there, there's yeah. no kind of telling whether it would ever go back to normal or or how long it would take. So at the time it was kind of, this could be the end, you know, that I, I might never go back running again. But um, I came home and I went to UCC and, and just I just kind of started taking care of my um, my health a little bit more. I suppose being in college in America, I just didn't really, you know, I wasn't kind of taking care of what I was putting into my body and things like that. So I just kind of um, looked at my diet a little bit more <clears throat> and uh, just did some work in the gym to help to build up the bone density. So kind of weight bearing exercise in the gym um, <clears throat> is good for, for building up your bones. So I was kind of doing a lot of that stuff. And eventually, uh, like it took took a few years, really. Um, eventually, it, it kind of went back to normal and I started running. I just started running recreationally just to, to be fit and everything. And then once that kind of felt OK and I, you know, there, there was no ill effects after that, I, I kind of started getting back into doing some sessions then again. Cool. So, um. Yeah, with all those setbacks, um, I know you said you, you when you got back into running, it was for recreational. Did you think, geez, I'd love to get back to the Olympics or was it just about um, kind of training your body and just seeing how things pan out? Yeah, I wasn't thinking about the Olympics, definitely not at the time. You know, at the time I was kind of, you know, I suppose I was 26, 27. And um, in my head, I was kind of like, I've had like a few years out now, you know, I'll never... Yeah get to that point you know again um so it wasn't on my mind at the time I did kind of think you know kind of running races locally and I wanted to do well at those and just kind of improve on my own personal times um is what I was doing at the time and eventually you know that those times improved and improved yeah. to a point where I kind of did start thinking then like you know if I really do focus and um train properly um that you know I could I could do something meaningful yeah. So um luckily for you that's something meaningful came back in April when you qualified for um for the Olympics. So what was that like to qualify? I'd say it was like just a feeling like um nothing else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was <laughs> um it was unbelievable. Uh you know, I felt like it was kind of a long time coming just because of, you know, COVID and everything yeah. and, and all the setbacks over the previous year. Because initially I had planned to do a race in the April of 2020 in Vienna to, to try and qualify for the Olympics. And obviously all those races were cancelled and and then the, the Olympics itself was postponed. So um, it was a long year, you know, of kind of uncertainty, um, you know, of what races will actually happen or will any races actually happen. Um, so kind of all through the summer and all through the, the autumn of last year was just kind of a lot of uncertainty. 
Um, but I trained away through it. Um, and then this race kind of cropped up in, in I kind of came across it in about October last year. And I just said, look, I'm going to enter this. I'm not going to get it into my head that it's not going to go ahead. You know, I'm just going to assume it is. And I trained, you know, like yeah. that. And thankfully it did go ahead. So it was it was amazing. Um, just just a brilliant experience to, to have done it then. <laughs> Um, so what was the what was the support like um, when you on and say your phone was probably blown up with messages? Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, so it was a, it was an unusual marathon, obviously, to what we would be used to because yeah. there was you know, no spectators allowed, and it was on a lapped course in a sort of country road, so it was different to your big city marathons. Um, but it was still, you know, I was in with the group and uh, there was a commentator on the course. So, you know, he was cheering every lap and, you know, it did help. Um, but yeah, afterwards then, um, you know, I, I went back to my car and my phone was in the car and it was just like so many messages, so many voicemails. I was just like, oh, God, <laughs> I'll never get through all of these. But it was just it was amazing. Yeah, that that is amazing. And um, just support, especially back home, um, is something else. Like, and yeah. Um. So the next thing is, uh, so you're a personal trainer, um, as well as that. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. So um, you know a lot about the body and like how to fuel your body and um overcome your setbacks. So do, does that like help with your own training? Like, do you kind of work on yourself? Um, if that makes any sense I do yeah so like I I would do my own kind of strength and conditioning stuff as well um kind of once a week and I do pilates as well so I'd kind of do a bit of that just kind of for mobility and and flexibility and just to kind of keep injuries away so I do I feel it complements um the running quite a lot just because I, I kind of know what to do to um you know if there's any niggles or anything like that I kind of know what to do to uh to, to get on top of it right away really yeah uh, yeah um yeah that's actually that's actually really interesting that like you know how to do that because I'm sure like there might be some people starting off and running they're not really sure how to do or how to mind your body um, and I'm sure long distance can be tough as well when you're training over time um, yeah it's tough on the body all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, so what was the next thing? So who would you say you have any role models in sports? I know you mentioned your aunt, but anyone that you look up to now or maybe even yourself? Um, yeah. Yeah, so like my aunt would definitely have been a huge inspiration growing up. And obviously the the one, uh, Sonia O'Sullivan, <laughs> oh, yeah. would have looked up to growing <laughs> up. Yeah, so um, like more kind of recently, I suppose... Um, I would look at um, so like a couple of, of athletes that are active at the moment. I suppose Sarah Hall over in the states. She's um, she's phenomenal. She's done um, a two twenty marathon there last year, and um, she's thirty eight. You know, so it just kind of shows that um, you you can keep improving well into your late thirties. So for me, being thirty four now, that's that's a real source of inspiration to see that you know there there is still um, quite a bit of time left in me um, if if I want. <laughs> <laughs> well you don't look you only look uh, as young as you feel and all that so yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah just kind of the last part then um if there's anyone out there looking for advice maybe they want to get into running or even take their running to the next step and um, do some competitions what advice would you have for them like, I mean, I think enjoy it, first of all, you know, um, there's no point kind of putting too much, you know, pressure or stress on yourself. Um, obviously, you know, you want to do well, so you want to train hard and everything like that, but um, you want to enjoy it. Um, you want to enjoy the process, I think, um, because, you know, the, the I suppose the, the wins and the glory, they only happen every once in a while so um if you're kind of just focusing on that um you know it might never happen but if you enjoy the process then you'll enjoy it and and you'll get to where you want to go yeah wise words to, to finish off on so um last question how do you think um you're going to do in the olympics and what are your goals going into it so like for me this olympics like it's the first time i'm running internationally in a very long time since i ran the euros back when i was 18 you know that it's my first yeah. time running internationally so i really want to just get the experience um i want to do like as well as i possibly can which is why i'm over here training um you know at altitude and everything so i would love to get improve on my time i'd love to improve on the time i did in cheshire 
Um, and, you know, if I could finish, you know, top 20, top 25 would be would be a great result for me, I think, in, in this one. But um, to get the experience and um, and then kind of move forward onto onto the next championships um, and potentially the next Olympics would be would be amazing.